ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. More migrant children seeking asylum just arrived at the San Diego Convention Center tonight, joining nearly 500 girls who arrived on Saturday. The Convention Center now dealing with dozens of COVID-19 cases. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. We have team coverage tonight of the situation going on down at the Convention Center. Our ABC tennis reporter Laura Acevedo is there with what we know about the latest group of children. Well, Steve and Kimberly, it is unclear exactly what time these girls arrived, but we did see buses pulling into a convention center parking lot away from our view. But HHS tells us there are 250 teenage girls ages 13 to 15 that are now joining the close to 500 that arrived on Saturday. The convention center will become home for hundreds of migrant girls who are expected to arrive Monday night. The girls seeking asylum will stay for 30 to 35 days while they reunite with their sponsors, oftentimes family members in the country. They are the sweetest, politest, most graceful uh, young women I've ever met. Kathy Lembo is the CEO of SBCS, formerly known as South Bay Community Services, a nonprofit coordinating support for the girls during their stay. What happens first is sort of a, a medical creep, a medical check, and a testing, a COVID-19 testing. Monday, Health and Human Services confirming 27 girls from Saturday's group tested positive for COVID-19 before arriving at the convention center. They traveled and were processed separately. Six more girls tested positive during their intake screening, plus an additional four who were exposed tested positive Monday. Those girls in isolation on another floor. The volunteers helping care for them are fully vaccinated. The COVID dorm is separated. It actually is on a different floor than the other dorm. Um, so the COVID dorm eats separately. They do everything separately. The emergency intake shelter can house up to 1,450 children, many asking how they can help. For now, SBCS asking people to donate to the San Diego Foundation, who set up a fund. Anyone wishing to donate anything else should call SBCS for guidance. People are being generous, but we also need to be careful about what we give the girls and don't give the girls. And it is for their safety. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. Again, 250 girls spending their first night here at the convention center. We are told that the intake process once they arrive here can be lengthy because as you heard, they are all medically checked and tested for COVID-19. Reporting live from the convention center, Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. Laura, thank you. And children staying at the convention center will be provided an educational program. And that's drawn some criticism from some local representatives. Our ABC Tennis reporter Anthony Pura has more on what kind of education the kids are expected to get and why some are critical of this plan. According to the San Diego County Office of Education, the program will be in person, not virtual, and it will follow COVID-19 protocols and guidelines. And it really is teaching them English. Uh, there's some stuff around American culture, and then there's some arts and that sort of thing. Kathy Lembo is the CEO of SBCS, formerly South Bay Community Services, talking about the educational program that will be provided to the migrant girls staying at the convention center. According to the San Diego County Office of Education, the teachers who are participating in the program are doing so voluntarily, and the program will be following COVID-19 screening protocols based on CDC guidelines. On Monday, Congressman Darrell Issa released a statement that said, for more than a year, parents and students in San Diego County have waited for educators to answer one question. When will our schools reopen with in-person instruction only? And for a year, they've been told to wait. It goes on to say that the decision to provide in-person instruction at the convention center is outrageous, saying parents have the right to be angry. Supervisor Jim Desmond also tweeted about the educational program at the convention center. His tweet saying in part, it's great there's in-person learning for them. I wish every child in San Diego County was allowed the same opportunity. But what I would say to everybody is these are children um, who have come to us seeking asylum. Uh, 
and their children. And I think that every one of us um, would want our children to be taken care of, uh, whether or not um, they were in this country or any country. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. And we have a duty to fight for our freedom. All eyes are on Minneapolis, where the highly anticipated trial of former police officer Derek Chauvin is now underway. Thousands gathered outside the courthouse this afternoon. ABC's Rena Roy reports on the cases attorneys on both sides are making and a warning. What we're about to show you may be disturbing. The death of George Floyd sparked an almost immediate reckoning on race, justice and policing. And now the video that stunned America 10 months ago played out in court as key evidence. A warning, these images are difficult to watch. Former officer Derek Chauvin's knee on George Floyd's neck. People who witnessed those disturbing moments taking the stand. Donald Williams can be heard on that video begging officers to stop. He was going to distress because of the knee and he vocalized it that I can't breathe. I need to get up and I'm sorry. Special Prosecutor Jerry Blackwell placing the blame directly on Chauvin. Mr. Derek Chauvin betrayed this badge when he used excessive and unreasonable force upon the body of Mr. George Floyd. But Chauvin's defense, hoping to create reasonable doubt, pointed to Floyd's drug use and an untreated heart condition, adding he resisted arrest and was difficult to subdue. You will see that three Minneapolis police officers could not overcome the strength of Mr. Floyd. Mr. Chauvin stands five foot nine, 140 pounds. Mr. Floyd is 6'3", weighs 223 pounds. 911 operator Jenna Scurry also testified, saying she watched the incident unfold on street cameras and reported it to a supervisor. My instincts were telling me that something's wrong. Something has not right. I don't know what, but something wasn't right. The mayor says security will be stepped up across the city throughout the trial, which is expected to last up to four weeks. In Minneapolis, Rena Roy, ABC News. The NAACP is suing over a controversial new election law in Georgia. Now, the group claims the law is, quote, overly racist. The law limits ballot drop boxes, tightens ID requirements for mail-in voting, and makes it a crime for anyone other than a poll worker to offer food and water to voters waiting in line. Georgia's governor claims the law will make elections more secure. Just going to make sure it's a secure process and that those drop boxes are, are monitored. Democrats in Congress have discussed voting rights legislation. Getting it passed, that would be an uphill battle. 60 votes are needed to pass in the Senate. President Biden has signaled he's open to changing those Senate rules. The state is once again trying to place a notorious sexual predator into San Diego County. The California Department of State Hospitals is recommending Douglas Badger be placed in a home on Horizon Hills Drive in unincorporated El Cajon. In 2014, the state proposed releasing Badger into a home in Campo, despite protests from residents there. He ended up withdrawing his petition for release. A virtual hearing on this new placement will be held April 20th. The public can send in comments through April 9th. And we have all of the contact information on 10news.com. President Biden announced today that 90% of adults will be eligible to get a COVID vaccine within the next three weeks. And he says finding a place to get that shot shouldn't be a problem for most people. 90% of all Americans will be living within five miles of a place they can get a shot. And of course, it'll take time for everyone to get their appointment. It's a big country. And as fast as we're going, we still have a long way to go to finish this vaccination effort. In fact, we aren't even there. We're only halfway yet. About 16% of the American population has been fully vaccinated so far. 
Biden previously directed states to make the vaccine available to all adults by May 1st. And the county reported 290 new cases today while our test positivity rate rose to 4%. No new deaths were reported, which is typical for a Monday. So that number stands at just over 3,500. The vaccine superstation at the Del Mar Fairgrounds is closing again because of a vaccine shortfall. Scripps Health, which runs the site, announced today it will be closed Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday because of the low number of doses delivered just last week. Impacted patients should be rescheduled automatically through the MyTurn online system. New sex trafficking charges against a former associate of the disgraced finance mogul Jeffrey Epstein. In the new charges, prosecutors say Ghislaine Maxwell knowingly recruited and paid a 14 year old to perform sex acts on Epstein. She's already behind bars awaiting trial on similar charges for sex trafficking in the 1990s. These new charges are more recent from 2001 to 2004. Maxwell pleaded not guilty to the previous charges. A ninth woman is now accusing New York governor, uh, the New York governor of inappropriate behavior. Sherry Dill says that uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo gave her three unwanted kisses on her cheeks while at her home to see flood damage back in 2017. Gloria Allred is her lawyer. She says the kisses were in a quote, highly sexual manner. Sherry is willing to cooperate in the investigation that is currently being conducted into numerous allegations of sexual harassment by the governor. Sherry is very brave to have made the decision to break her silence. A lawyer for Cuomo says the governor has frequently greeted men and women with hugs and kisses over the years. Cuomo denies touching anyone inappropriately.